Michael Vincent, it's an honor to bring up our next guest. It's Tim Thorne, and he is uh, the president of ABF Freight, but he was also a U.S. Army infantry officer, a former Oklahoma Sooner, and he was recently honored with um, he was recently honored with the 2020 Herbert Metziger Service Award from the Dixon Center for Military and Veteran Services. Tim, thank you so much for joining us on the air today. Hey man, thank you for having me. I'm I'm stoked. You know we're we're talking about something I'm really passionate about. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Well, let's start there. Why why so why are you so passionate about veterans affairs? We did touch on how you were in the infantry for the U.S. Army. So I imagine that was that that's kind of where this all started. Well, you know, uh, not really. Uh, grew up in a military environment. Uh, I'm the son of a veteran. My father was a career airman in the Air Force. Uh, my father-in-law is also career Air Force. Um, I have two brothers that were in the Army. And then my son went to the Air Force Academy and uh, spent five years in the Air Force and also got out as a captain. So, um, you know, just, uh, you know, just really passionate about um, what the Army's done for me and what the military's done for our family. And then, um, you know, great that I'm able to connect that with, with the job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, we know that you have you you won the Metzger Award, and then the ABF uh, uh, was also honored as a veteran friendly company as well uh, for 2020, and and I think a number of years before that as well. Can you talk about your personal transition from military yeah. to civilian life and how that motivated you? Yeah, I think uh, I think that uh, that's that's quite uh, an interesting story, and really. Uh, transcends to a lot of veterans today. And so, you know, if you think about the, the first probably half of my life was was all military. And so that transition uh, was really um, from the military civilian life was somewhat of a culture shock for my wife and I. You know, she was a military brat, like I mentioned, and she married me right after I went in the Army, which was right out of college. And so at that time, you know, military life was all we knew. Um, but I was hired uh, at ABF in the, in the early 90s and, and kind of felt at home there. You know, if you think about our industry, it's, it's somewhat similar to, to some of the roles in the military. It's uh, hard work, as, as both of you know, uh, pretty good pay, uh, good benefits. You know, there's some nights and weekends, and I can tell you uh, in the Army, uh, I spent a lot of nights and weekends playing Army. And, uh, you know, I had a leadership role in the Army, so this this really helped me in regards to uh, employee engagement, uh, things like uh, maintenance and safety. And uh, I was just used to living and working in a very diverse environment. And so I think all of this translates well into trucking. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the military and I think why they, it pairs so well with supply chain is in military, you're repositioning assets, you're repositioning people, you're dealing with foreign governments, you're doing yeah. all of the things that we do in supply chain uh, in a sense. I mean, obviously, there's there's also the whole infantry thing and yeah. the whole weapons thing. We don't typically fight our trade wars with, with <laughs> weapons uh, on those kind of documents, but, <laughs> but there, there's a lot of similarities. So did you, do you feel that a lot of military veterans that they make ideal candidates to transition from that military life to the supply chain? Well, you know, I, I certainly think so. Uh, when I think about the servicemen and women of today's military, I think they're, they're well-trained for all sorts of fields and industries. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's the largest organization in the world. You, you think about uh, departments like uh, HR, accounting, technology, engineering, uh, the legal side of it, admin, safety, payroll, finance. I mean, if you even think about jobs like yours, I mean, there's a, a, the Armed Forces Network. Uh, there's the Stars and Stripes publication. There's all sorts of jobs there. And to your point, um, you know, beans, bullets, and fuel – just don't just show up on the battlefield. Uh, I suspect the military manages the largest supply chain in the world. So it's just full of logistics professionals uh, that are just right for our industry. You know, I think about, uh, you know, some of us might remember the Red Bar, know about the Red Ball Express in World War II, or you can go back to the Civil War and Sherman's uh, March to the Sea, you know, in the Civil War. The, the, 
you know, our military in our country really depends on the, the supply chain and, and specific to trucking. Uh, the military has a lot of heavy equipment, like you guys talked about. Uh, most of it's diesel. And I suspect you, that sounds familiar. Uh, you know, they have big trucks like we do, as well as tanks and tracks. And, you know, they have to have drivers. They have to maintain those. And even the working environment's very similar. So, you know, I agree. There, there's a there's a lot out there for us in, in the veteran uh, space. Absolutely. Well, and Vincent, I, was, I just I, one note before ahead. we move on from yes, that, because please. he's talking about the space and the military thing is, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but the box that changed the world, Malcolm McLean, he made the modern standardized shipping container. That's correct. But the military, what he took was notes from the military mm-hmm. who themselves were using standardized containers to send munitions right. and goods throughout the world. Right, right. Yeah. And I was, was going to say, I mean, many, many battles in all wars and in, in most wars were won because of logistics or sure. lost because of the disruption of the supply chain yeah. and the logistics. And I agree with you. Veterans military are very, very good for this industry and many, many industries as well. But let's talk about why, why the urge to, to uh, help them transition and bring them into ABF freight. Uh, you're, you're overcoming, let's talk about the issues that they face. That is obviously the, the motivation for you bringing them in and trying to assist them uh, in changing. What are those issues that they see coming out of military life into civilian? Well, you know, just, just, I guess, similar to what, what I saw, you know, it was a bit of a culture shock and, um, you know, you're coming into it to a world that, that most people don't even know what you did. And, uh, that, that's an issue when you think about, uh, most civilians haven't served in the military. And so all you think about is, is bullets. You don't think about everything else that they've done in the military. You don't think about how, uh, educated they are. Uh, how much training they've had, how they've worked in these different environments. And and when I think about veterans working at our company, I look at it in a couple of different ways. Um, the first, of course, I mean, is, is, is I, th- I think it's just a great business decision. And then the second bucket would be, you know, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. And so uh, just, just kind of looking at the numbers, you know, there are, are about a quarter of a million uh, servicemen and women transitioning into the civilian world every year. And, uh, you know, at, at ArcBest and ABF, you know, we don't we don't need all of them, you know, but um, we, we've been around about 100 years. And so we have an annual need primarily due to retirements. And so when you look at the specific veteran, uh, let me let me give you uh, some statistics and this. This comes from the Department of Labor and other things, but uh, high school graduates, 67% of high school graduates apply to college. Only 29% of those meet the standards for entry into the military service. So you could say that it's it's harder to get in the military than some of our colleges. And I think Mm. what this does for me is it it speaks to the raw talent that's available to us and available to our industry. When you look at veteran unemployment, it's it's lower than non-veteran unemployment. And so, you know, you could also say that employers want to hold on to our veterans. Uh, there's a LinkedIn analysis that shows veterans are uh, more likely to be promoted earlier than their non-veteran cohorts. And so when I think about, you know, just the numbers, uh, hiring veterans is a good business decision. And for, for me, it's really a no-brainer. And then, you know, we, we think about, uh, you know, our company has a, a values-driven culture. It's based on core values, and a lot of companies do. And that's what we look for in candidates. And, and the military has core values, too. And so, uh, you know, it really kind of aligns well with our recruiting efforts. Military service, men and women, and if, if you've read any military books or studied any any history, you know, it doesn't always go perfect. And so think about our industry and what we have to do. What what do we do? We find a way to accomplish a task or mission. And that's that's our vision statement. Our vision statement says we'll find a way. And that came from a customer. So that really aligns well with veterans. And so if, if I could take a second, I'd like to talk about that second bucket which is, uh, you know, the, uh, hey, it's just the right thing to do. 
And so, again, you know, you've got a couple hundred thousand veterans that are transitioning to the civilian world. And like me, you know, many of us didn't know much about the civilian world. Um, you know, heck, veterans served our great country. I just think, you know, we ought to do our part, you know, and find them uh, great jobs. And and if you and if you think about, you know, um, where veterans are today. Uh, a newly released federal report found the number of homeless veterans uh, in the U.S. increased last year on a single night in uh, January of last year. Now, we're talking January. That's before the pandemic, uh, and, it's, and it's January. I mean, it's wintertime. Over 37,000 veterans were homeless. Mm. And, uh, you know, and you, and, and you can imagine what that leads to. It leads to depression and, and then... Uh, Course, yeah, Tim, I was going to say the worse. mental health issues we hear about oh, veteran yeah. mental health issues all of the time. Yeah. And uh, re regardless if you're a veteran or not, just getting any help in America for mental health issues has been a challenge. But with PTSD and what we're learning about it now and what a lot of veterans have been through, um, it seems even more urgent than ever. Now, we're almost out of time, but if a veteran's listening to this and we're doing our job and they're hearing this and they say, you know what, ABF, ARC best sound like great places for me to go. What's the next step? What do they got to do? Yeah, I think I think the the next step would would you know the the great part about the military today is that they can connect with us really in an easy way. Um, they can go to jobs.abf.com, jobs.arcb.com. We have uh, connected by Zoom and other uh, uh, media uh, with with servicemen and women all over the world. We we connected with uh, someone on a, a aircraft carrier that was deployed in the Middle East and did a Zoom interview. And so uh, it's it's uh, it's really easy to connect with us. They also have a, 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 a something called SkillBridge, and and all the military folks know about that. And so that's that's the way they can connect with us. Tim, thank you so much for your service. It has been an honor talking to you, dude. Thank you for joining us at Freight Waves Live at Home right here in Chattanooga and on your computer screens everywhere across the globe. Maybe even on that aircraft carrier. Yeah, maybe even on an aircraft <laughs> I hope so. I hope so, too. Thank it's, you so much, Tim. It's been a good time. we got a little more coming up. Stick around.